Ever wondered why success seems to breed more success? It's not just luck or coincidence, but a phenomenon rooted deeply in our brain's neurobiology, the winner effect. This fascinating concept is more than just a catchy phrase. It's a scientifically observed pattern where success in one area can increase the likelihood of success in future endeavors. And it's not about the external factors like money or fame, but the internal neurobiological changes that occur in the brain. When we succeed, our brain undergoes transformations that make us more likely to succeed again. It's as if winning flips a switch in our brain, setting off a chain reaction that primes us for future victories. But it's not just about winning once. The more we win, the stronger this effect becomes. So the winner effect is not a mere theory, but a neurobiological reality that shapes our chances of future victories. Winning doesn't just feel good. It triggers a cocktail of neurochemicals that can change our brain and behavior. When we win, our brains release a surge of dopamine, the feel-good neurotransmitter associated with reward and pleasure. This dopamine rush not only makes us feel great, but it also motivates us to pursue further success, driving us to take more risks and push our boundaries. But that's not all. Winning also triggers the release of testosterone, a hormone associated with dominance and power. This testosterone boost can enhance our confidence, making us feel invincible and primed for more victories. These neurochemical changes don't just fade away once the victory celebrations are over. They can alter our neural pathways, shaping our future behavior and decision-making. They can make us more resilient, more motivated, and more determined to win again. Winning, in essence, rewires our brain, setting the stage for a cycle of continued success. But here's the catch. Frequent winning can lead to overconfidence and distorted decision-making creating a winner's curse. As Ian Robertson explains in his compelling book, The Winner Effect, repeated success can become a double-edged sword. The same neurological changes that boost confidence and motivation with each win can also skew our perception of risk, making us more prone to take excessive chances. The surge of dopamine and testosterone that comes with winning can make us feel invincible blinding us to the potential pitfalls ahead. This is the treacherous side of the winner effect. It's like being on a winning streak at a casino where every roll of the dice feels destined to come up aces, but the house always has the edge and sooner or later the odds catch up with us. This is not to say that success is bad, far from it. It's just a reminder that unchecked success, like anything in excess, can lead to unforeseen problems. Success while sweet can also set us up for a fall if not handled with care. Failure, on the other hand, paints a different neurological picture. It's not simply the opposite of success, it's a complex event that can have profound effects on our brain. When we face failure, our brain experiences a surge in stress hormones. These hormones, particularly cortisol, can lead to feelings of anxiety and a decrease in our confidence. But here's the interesting part. Failure also has the potential to be an exceptional teacher. It can help us understand where we went wrong and how to improve. This process is largely mediated by the prefrontal cortex, the part of our brain responsible for decision-making and learning from mistakes. So, while failure can be emotionally tough, it also triggers important neurological processes that can pave the way for future success. It's a bit like a mental workout, strengthening our cognitive resilience and adaptability. Failure, while challenging, can be a stepping stone to success if we understand its impact on our brain. Stress is the silent saboteur that can tip the scales between success and failure. This stealthy intruder, stress, creeps into our lives often unnoticed until it's too late. Chronic stress, the persistent, relentless pressure we face day in and day out, can have profound effects on our brains, just as success can bring about neurobiological changes that propel us forward. Chronic stress can erode these gains, dulling the shine of our victories, it can diminish the positive impact of success, turning our triumphs into hollow victories. Stress, if left unchecked, can also exacerbate the impact of failure, making each setback feel like a crushing defeat. This is because stress can affect our brain's neurotransmitter systems, disrupting the delicate balance of chemicals that influence our mood, motivation, and confidence. Consequently, managing stress isn't just about preserving our mental well-being. It's about maintaining the neurobiological conditions that enable the winner effect to flourish. Managing stress is not just about feeling better, it's a critical factor in harnessing the winner effect. We are all unique, and this uniqueness extends to how we respond to success and failure. Indeed, our individual differences significantly sway the course we chart through the seas of success and failure. 
These differences stem from a multitude of sources, including our personality traits, genetic makeup, and the experiences that have shaped us since the early days of our lives. Our personality, whether we're introverted or extroverted, risk-takers or cautious, can dictate our approach to success and failure. Next, our genetics play a role, subtly influencing our behavior and reactions. For instance, some of us might be naturally more resilient or more prone to stress based on our genetic predispositions. And let's not forget our early life experiences. These formative years lay the groundwork for our future responses. Triumphs and defeats experienced early in life can set patterns for how we perceive and respond to success and failure later on. So remember, your journey with success and failure is as unique as you are. Understanding the winner effect can transform how we approach success. In the real world, where success and failure are intertwined with our daily lives, the winner effect can be a powerful ally. It's not just about celebrating victories, it's about leveraging the power of those victories to shape our future endeavors. For individuals, understanding the winner effect can offer a new perspective on personal growth. When we succeed, our brain rewards us with a cocktail of dopamine and testosterone. This not only feels good but also boosts our confidence, stokes our motivation and nudges us towards taking calculated risks. By recognizing these changes we can consciously harness this momentum to propel us forward. Leaders can also use the winner effect to their advantage. When a team achieves a goal it's not just a collective win but also a neurochemical boost for each team member. Leaders can channel this energy into the next challenge, fostering a cycle of success. But remember, it's crucial to keep the winner's curse in check. Overconfidence can lead to excessive risk-taking. So, strike a balance between pushing the boundaries and keeping the feet on the ground. Now let's talk about organizations. A culture that celebrates wins, big or small, can cultivate the winner effect at a collective level. It's about creating an environment that rewards success and encourages risk-taking while also promoting resilience in the face of failure. This can lead to a more engaged, motivated, and innovative workforce, but we must remember, this isn't a one-size-fits-all strategy. As we've learned, individual differences play a significant role in how we respond to success and failure. Tailoring approaches to these differences can make the application of the winner effect more effective. It's also worth noting that understanding the neurobiology of failure is just as important. It helps build resilience and learn from setbacks. After all, failure is not the opposite of success, but a stepping stone towards it. With the neuroscience of success at our fingertips we can build strategies to maximize our potential. Success and failure are two sides of the same coin, striking a balance is crucial. In the dance of life, success and failure are partners, twirling us through experiences that shape our destiny and define our character. Success sends a rush of dopamine and testosterone through our bodies, a potent cocktail that elevates our confidence and drives us to take more risks. But this dance is not a solo performance. Failure, the shadow partner, offers a different tune. It brings stress, a decrease in confidence, a momentary pause in our dance. Yet it is in this delicate balance between success and failure that we find the key to long-term well-being and sustained success. Success breeds success, yes. But without the occasional stumble, without the taste of defeat, we risk falling prey to the winner's curse. Overconfidence and increased risk-taking can lead to setbacks, can lead us to dance too close to the edge. Success is like a heady wine, intoxicating us with its sweet taste. It fuels our ambition, it makes us feel invincible. But too much of it dulls our senses, makes us less empathic, and more addicted to the high of winning. On the other hand, failure is the bitter tonic that sobers us up, that reminds us of our humanity. It's not a pleasant taste, but it's necessary. It's the counterweight that keeps us grounded, the grit that polishes our character. The key then lies in maintaining this balance, in learning to dance with both success and failure. It's about celebrating the victories but also embracing the lessons that come with defeat. It's about not letting the high of success cloud our judgment and not letting the sting of failure dampen our spirit. Achieving this balance is not easy. It requires self-awareness, resilience and the wisdom to understand that both success and failure are transient, that they are but stepping stones on our journey. And it is this journey, marked by the ebb and flow of triumphs and setbacks, that shapes us, that makes us who we are. Success is sweet, failure is bitter, but a balance between the two is the recipe for long-term achievement.